Hello there, this is me Anj Pandey and you are watching One India News. Viewers, today is Independence Day. Today, every Indian is filled with pride and joy on this momentous occasion. However, when we talk of the stories of independence, it is something that fills everyone with emotions. It fills some with pride, it fills some with great sorrow. Today we have got two prominent books with us. One is Humanity Amidst Insanity and second is Warriors After War. And we have also got the author of these two books with us, Mr. Tridivesh Singh Mani. Welcome to the show, Mr. Mani. So my first question to you is that what exactly was the inspiration and the striking point behind writing these two books? Essentially, there are two or three, three factors, I would say. The first is right from childhood, you know, my maternal grandparents and paternal grandparents, their roots were in West Punjab. So one grew up on stories, uh, not just about partition, but even pre-partition. And one heard more about, uh, in fact, one has grown up hearing about Kahuta, about Gujranawala, hmm. and you know, about obviously about Lahore. Uh, so one was that aspect. Uh, the second was myself, you know, when I, you know, when you, uh, when I studied overseas and interacted with uh, uh, scholars and uh, from across the border, many of them obviously, you know, there are cultural similarities. And then you just begin to question uh, the reasons what led to, you know, the divide. Uh, so, of course, the second factor, it's not necessarily that uh, the interactions with people from other parts of South Asia, I would not say directly led to a curiosity, but you, somewhere or the other that does play a role. Uh, the third is also that, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know one read about uh, the Holocaust and mm -hmm. people drew, drew parallels, obviously parallels have been drawn, between, but not much was done for very long on partition. So that was obviously one aspect. And then uh, even uh, hmm. there were very serious, serious works uh, serious, a lot of research had begun to happen, but obviously, uh, I think the first uh, partition, one was that, I think there was, there was a serial called Tamas. I mean, I was very young then, but one has memories of that. And then, um, based on a novel, and then, hmm. uh, The Train to Pakistan, uh, Kushwan Singh, very famous novel. So, I think these were the, some of the important points. Now, I would also like to add here that for very long, this it's a very important issue that the post-partition survivors, they were not able to overcome the trauma. So even some of the prominent scholars and writers, they wrote on partition, not based on their own stories, but they wrote novels. But it is in the past two decades, you see a lot of work of that sort happening. And even uh, I think uh, oral history has become a very hmm. important tool. Uh, the first important work in this context was by Urvashi Butali. There have been novels earlier, but Urvashi Butalia's uh, work was very important in terms of promoting oral history, the importance of oral history. So I think these are some of the really important, uh, uh, anybody who, not just me, but anybody who's in this generation or after is interested in partition, I think these are some of the important propelling factors. Mr. Tridivesh, uh, these two books, can you s tell us something more about these books? What uh, is this exactly about and what kind of stories do these books have regarding the partition? The book basically, it's a co-edited book. Uh, on the Indian side, I carried out interviews. And on the Pakistani side, there were two uh, co-authors, Mr. Tahir Malik and Ali Farooq Malik. Uh, the first edition came out in 2008. The uh, next edition came out in 2022. It, the focus, uh, we have 20 stories, 10 on each side. The focus there is on uh, instances where members of one community rescued mm -hmm. members of another. So non-Muslims, rescuing Muslims and vice versa. Or somebody who has been, you know, rescued. And uh, there were some very interesting uh, takeaways in that. So, so for instance, it is simply put... We blame religion, for instance, as a, one of the dividing factors. There were instances of religious priests of one community saving members of another. Uh, 
in some instances people used religious mm. symbols to disguise themselves also uh that was then the other is that you know the ordinary uh, public especially individuals coming from west punjab they actually did some of them thought we'll come back mm-hmm. because they said you know we've lived together for so long even un- we had various rulers uh but we have li- lived together and uh, this is a question of few months and we'll come back there was some inst- there was one instance where an individuals actually asked a-, a sikh gentleman was asked to unfurl the flag of pakistan then after that in that area the riots broke out and then he left after that mm-hmm. so you know what happens is when we look at often when you look at in first first of all i think the scholarship of partition was often relegated to the sidelines because obviously uh, 15th august happens to be the independence day so this the the emphasis was on mm-hmm. that so in recent years that of course has begun to change there is more and more growing uh, interest in partition but also even the partition scholarship it often missed out it was based on uh, you know the broader issues so the human side of it some of the, like i've just given you some ins- they never really came out hmm. uh, and uh, how you know people also like so, so for instance this thing of uh, at a personal level i can say you go to uh, till a few years ago when you went to into india international center people who had hailed from who were from lahore or from there used to be one sort of, it was an informal sort of club and they used to be discussing that you know we used to live like this in lahore we had, used to be discussing stories and all that and that happens obviously even in punjab it happened in the rural areas people who have migrated from that side of course that generation is withering away now these things were relegated to the sidelines now that has begun to change the human side of it has begun to change so one last question that definitely we were partitioned at a scale and an unprecedented violence followed after that but uh, regarding in this 21st century how do you see india pakistan relations coming in the future days i think in the future one of the important aspects is social media has really changed one the first thing i would like to say is that social media has democratized the partition space it was earlier relegated to certain sections of society and you had to be an intellectual or a scholar you know and and it was done under the overall ambit of you know conceptual frameworks and theoretical frameworks but the most important part is that in this this region everything happens according to word of mouth so mm-hmm. oral history had be- i mean you know the oral history interviews had started but a lot of people a lot of writers themselves were not they were not articulate in the local languages so you could not narrate you know especially punjabi for instance you could not actually uh, a lot of stories are missed out now you have initiatives hmm. you have uh, uh, for instance your of this uh, partition archive and the, the uh, punjabi leher channel from which uh, started off across the border i think that has done human service it has uh, one it has obviously gone to various parts of west punjab and you know uh, st- stories regarding partition have come out but it has also helped in reuniting families a lot of families have got reunited so these initiatives have been very important and uh, i may also mention here that interestingly uh, the kartarpur religious corridor has apart from obviously uh, fulfilling the desires of uh, uh, pilgrims and there's obviously the uh, there's a yearning on this side of the border for very long there was a yearning and that has been fulfilled but uh, even these fa- some of these uh, families uh, family members were reunited after very long at kartarpur religious so it has played a very important role in that and i think uh, for the future it's so very important to the next generation mm-hmm. one is obviously we must learn uh there are certain aspects as i said which are relegated to the sidelines are positives also from the past people have coexisted so like for instance till 1965 the people to people contacts the trade was there so we need to learn that even after 47 yes a lot of things happened but 10 years after that when people actually went that side or you know uh, pa- pakistanis came this side uh, there was born homey you know there were hockey mm-hmm. matches cricket matches so if immediately after partition you could get over that at least we should strive uh for a manageable relationship and it's very good to see sports persons from both sides in spite of the relations being strained i think sports persons have a very good cordial relationship and what is also interesting is that in, you know 
earlier uh, hmm. when when cricket wasn't played for very long when there weren't too many interactions there used to be hospital uh, hostility even between sports persons now that is gone so it's you know and i would like to add here that you need the first thing is i'm not getting into uh, you know whether peace or conflict you should at least there should at least be majority and the relationship should be one which is at least manageable and normal there's i mean this uh, unnecessary hostility jingoism alternate i mean that does good to no one at all well mr tudivesh thank you for this interview with us thank you